on to free speech, academic freedom, once again under threat. Well, some would say it's constantly under threat. But one professor who is standing up to these attacks is Holly Lawford Smith from Melbourne University. Professor Holly Lawford Smith put up a website all about uh, trying to figure out the impacts and seeking stories of biological women who had incidents and felt threatened by the presence of transgender women in women-only spaces. This, of course, went down very poorly with certain activists, and let's hear all about it from Professor uh, Holly Lawford-Smith. Professor Smith, welcome to the program. Your website, No Conflict, they said, calls for women assigned at birth to anonymously share stories about any time they have felt threatened by transgender women. Can you tell me about what you were seeking to achieve with this website and what some of the reaction has been? Can I just make a small clarification? So the website is calling on female people to submit uh, stories about their experiences of disruption by all and any male people to spaces that should be right. se segregated. Um, and I think that's just, it's an important distinction because it was reported this way in the age this week as well, right? Um, women assigned female at birth uh, calling on stories about transgender women. And that makes it look like it's a, you know, a, a privileged group of women attacking a marginalized group of women. And that's just not, not at all what's going on here. So this was a sure. personal activist project of mine that I started because I'm interested in the protection of sex segregated spaces. And it caused a lot of trouble, uh, both on campus and off, um, because people called the project transphobic. So tell us about that reaction where they decided that part of this uh, program was transphobic, and how has uh, the university and other elements on campus reacted to that? Um, well, they've reacted pretty badly. This has been going on since February now. Um, I launched the website, and there's just been a kind of ongoing series of you know, protests, um, petitions, various kind of things happening in the media. Um, it's turned into quite a broad attack, I would say. So it's expanded into trying to get my second year subject feminism shut down or taken off me. Um, it's turned into making accusations about my like research ethics uh, uh, kind of integrity, even though this was an activist personal project, not a research project. Um, it's turned into accusations about you know appropriate behaviour between colleagues on campus, and I think maybe this is what ties into what's been in the news this week. So the vice chancellor used his annual address on Tuesday night um, to make various comments about respectful interactions between colleagues on campus and to kind of raise these questions about how one colleague, <laughs> which is me, can pursue her research without this causing um, harm anguish, distress, and so on to uh, transgender and gender diverse staff and students, um, which is, of course, a description which I would say is um, pretty overstated. Mm, Rita. Well, they talk about harm to gender diverse or transgender people, but what about the harm to academics who want to study uh, freely and their students. We've seen already at Melbourne University these violent protests. I think we've got some footage here of uh, some of your supporters having water thrown at them and being verbally abused. I think we can get that up. And let's just have a, a quick look at some of the language being used at one of these protests that are against you. All of you f off! First year, you f***ing kept me over like for three hours straight while you're have a what? bottle of vinegar and water was spraying me in the eyes while a bunch of f***ing were doing nothing about it. Are you f***ing happy about yourself? Hey, can we please de-escalate this? It is important. Can we get these turrets off this campus? So, so what yeah. about the harm done to academic freedom, the harm done to students and, and feminists and, and, and the safety of people who want to study this without harassment? What has the university done about that? I know. I mean, it's, a, it's so distressing. It's creating a real, a real sort of chilling effect on speech on campus. I already know from a number of different students about their sort of negative experiences in various classes, kind of being shut down from being able to ask questions about sex and sex-based rights, to be able to sort of question things from a gender-critical perspective at all. Um, so protests like this, wow. I think, are 
really negatively impacting women on campus. And one thing I found remarkable about the vice chancellor's address on Tuesday, I don't know if you had a chance to read the whole thing, but he actually went from mm. talking about um, women and how we need to take steps to elevate and encourage the voices of women when they want to speak out um, smoothly into kind of making comments that would, I think, overall have the impact of shutting down gender critical speech. So I guess there's there's the academic freedom slash freedom of speech issues about what research can be done. <clears throat> then there's also the impacts on women on campus, you know, being able to do feminism or sort of pursue their own interests or speak freely. Um, why this over, overwhelming concern with the trans and gender diverse community and the seemingly apparent invisibility uh, of women <laughs> students and staff. Now, I've seen some of your supporters. Uh, uh, sorry, Jan, I was just going to have a quick follow-up. I, I had a... I've seen some of your supporters uh, be assaulted during a women's march at International Women's Day rally. One of your supporters who's mm -hmm. disabled was assaulted, pushed to the ground, and uh, uh, I spoke to her on this station. But I wish... Yeah. I, I want you to tell us what you've encountered yourself. You've had these... Uh, Activist academics wanting to get you sacked. They've signed petitions against you. Tell us about what sort of threats and, and behaviour you faced. Look, I've been really lucky not to have any sort of physical threat like um, the women you're speaking about had or like my supporters at the protest that you just showed the footage from. So almost all of my sort of um, harassment or targeting has been online right, um, or through these kind of activist campaigns to have um, my activities limited, right, so calls to have the, the subject feminism suspended until there's a review that the student activists are satisfied by. Um, so, it, you know, in a way I'm lucky it could have been, it could have been a lot worse. Obviously it's worse when it's, um, when it's physical, but the, like, for example, the gender affirmation policy, which is just a draft, um, that was reported on in The Age this week, that looks to have been put together specifically to limit my public-facing activities relating to my research. So this event that we had in 2019 um, to get a bunch of academics together to speak about the sex self-identification legislation, the policy um, started to be drafted soon after that, and it looks like it's a direct response to that event, wanting to get control in the future for the university to not... Um, allow events like that to go ahead on the grounds that they cause harm to the trans and gender diverse community on campus. So that's like an incredible limiting of academic um, activities on campus, um, which I think is really worrying. Caleb. Yeah, this uh, gender affirmation policy you mentioned. So it, it, it's been drafted. It, it's basically, it considers prohibiting uh, public speeches or events that the university deems to be a quote-unquote attack on gender of, uh, diversity. And I understand yes. that um, the, the free speech policy would also be changed to prevent academics from engaging in any kind of public discourse that the university deems to have the potential to harm transgender and gender diverse uh, members of the university community. And uh, it's once again, we've talked about it a lot on this program, but, but it's once again an example of academia stifling academia. Now, if you can't ask difficult questions, if you can't even look into genuine issues, what is the point of a university existing anymore? Yeah, um, look, I think that's right. Uh, I, I haven't heard of any moves to modify the freedom of speech policy. I think what was being reported this week was just that the gender affirmation policy in introducing these limitations would kind of have an impact or in the way that it interacted with the free speech policy. And it's true that some of the measures that it looks to introduce um, are pretty draconian. That being said, it's just a draft, right? So if we're optimistic, we might hope that there was a, a, um, a great amount of constructive feedback from the university community and that, that, that a more sensible version of that policy will, will be forthcoming. Um, I don't know how optimistic that is, but in its current form, there's, I think, three main things that are really worrying. It's introducing um, compelled speech. So it says staff and students will use um, preferred pronouns and descriptors for students. 
Um, it uh, invites uh, the violation of sex segregated spaces on campus. So it, it says that everyone should use the spaces they prefer for their identities. And then I think most worryingly, it has this um, clause you pointed to, uh, which gives the university the right to cancel all, um, sort of give the trans community on campus veto power over all public events and public discourse, right? So that wouldn't quite limit my, for yeah. example, ability to do my research, but it would limit my ability to do any sort of outreach and engagement on the basis of that research. Those are huge encroachments. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely um, chilling. Can I just Rita. ask, uh, beyond what's happening on the university campus and, and the female-only spaces, what about mm. female-only spaces elsewhere, about women's prisons, women's shelters or women's yeah. change rooms. Uh, what has your research shown about uh, if allowing male bodies into those spaces has an impact on natural born women? Has your research uh, found anything thus far? Oh, look, I'm, I'm a philosopher, so unfortunately I don't do any empirical research. Um, the work that I've done on women-only spaces is limited to the kind of ethics and um, sort of like ethics and political philosophy around women-only spaces, why they matter to women, why they're important, and why we should want to maintain them as sex segregated rather than gender identity segregated. That being said, aside from my research, I have a keen interest in this area. I've been following it closely in multiple countries for about four years as a way of making sure that my work is empirically informed. Um, and you're absolutely right, Richard. Like there are all these really important um, kind of issues out there that aren't getting enough discussion. And I don't know if you saw um, Barbara Kay had a piece in the National Post, I think it was today, um, about the situation for prisons in Canada. Uh, just pointing out how many um, male prisoners have made requests under the Canadian law to be transferred into women's prisons. And I think she reported that it was something like 50% of the requests for transfers were from sex offenders, people who had lived previous oh. to prison in the world as, as men and had offended against women and were now under Canadian law with sex self-ID being transferred into women's prisons. I think that's absolutely outrageous. Oh, Just want to absolutely. ask finally before, before you go, have, have you had any support from your fellow academics at the university, even quietly, to say, look, we support you on this um, and we think that what the university is doing really is an attack on free speech? What's been the reaction of your colleagues? Yes, absolutely. So I do want to stress that the university community is quite divided over this issue. So it's absolutely not the case that it's kind of me versus the rest of the university. Um, I think this has become a really polarizing issue and I, I have an awful lot of support, um, some more public than others, but but I, I would say I do feel really well supported and I do think um, this is gonna be an issue that, you know, because there's such strong feelings on both sides, it's gonna be difficult for the university to work out a good um, resolution, but, but I don't think it'll just be um, a kind of easy matter of going the, the activists, trans activist way. So that's good. Thank you so much. That's, well, that's good to hear. At least there's some support out there. A bright uh, little shaft of light in all of this. Thank <laughs> you so much for taking the time to chat with us this morning, Professor. Um, good luck with Thank your fight. You. And uh, we might see you again sometime in the future.